Okay. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Pit Stop Podcast. George Russell has won the Brazilian Grand Prix. For the first time ever, we have sung God Save the King. Claps all around for George Russell. Amazing result of Brazil. What a Grand Prix that was. His first ever win. The 113th driver ever to win a Grand Prix. Oh my God, the <laughs> stats are rolling already. What an absolute beast. It was a great race. It was. A, we have got a lot to talk about. And our voices are back, which is lovely. Quite. I can't quite sing the high note yet. That's all right. That's all right. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll get, okay. there. we'll get there. You've done Fab's Notebook today, haven't you? I have done another episode of Fab's Notebook. I have indeed. I feel like there's going to be a lot for us to talk about. There was a lot that happened in this race. Kind of what you want from a race after having a couple of boring races recently mm. my biggest takeaway which i'm sure we're going to talk about is the fact that second and third in the driver's stand is in our level on points going into abu dhabi oh it's tight oh it's tight max verstappen you naughty boy yeah we we'll definitely <laughs> get into that i i'm not a fan of that one bit by yeah the way. you, you did raise you, you raised your concerns midway through the yeah i don't want to drop too much beef right at the beginning of the podcast but as we sink into the episode and dive deep into the world of racing who knows what may come out of my mouth <laughs> God, anything. Who knows what's going to go into it as well? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Russell first. He won the Brazilian Grand Prix at the Interlagos in Sao Paulo. Hamilton second, Sainz third, Leclerc fourth, Alonso fifth. Alonso, the man, the myth, my favourite, the king. I did love seeing Mercedes, Mercedes, Ferrari, Ferrari, Alonso, Red Bull, Red Bull. He deserves to be up there in the realm of them. He really does. He really does. Let's also say big shout out at this point to Kevin Magnussen. Pole position on Saturday. I it's loved tough. it. I loved it. I loved it. See, so came back in pole. Gunther was over the moon. Mm. And I love the fact that they said it was a team effort. And like the team have done so well to get him out on time. Like, yeah. let's be honest, it's a complete luck. But yeah. Well, I've been thinking about this. But no, it is partly because of the team. They, they predicted the weather perfectly. Mm. Or they just got him out first. They saw the rain coming. They got him out. They did a quick lap on soft tyres. Well, Leclerc didn't have a chance to do a quick lap, did he? Because his team put him out on Inters. In, they did? Oh, yeah, yeah. they did. Fuck. <laughs> Absolutely genius decision by Ferrari really sure once again. What do they say on TV? It's like when you show up to school and it's this mufty day and you're wearing your uniform or something like that. <laughs> so, Commentators were great, so by the way. Let's give a shout out to Lazenby before we forget. Fuck me. Lazenby and Gnomes absolutely smashed that whole beginning bit of before the race. I know. It was like a different kind of grid walk, right? This is on Sky Sports F1, by the way. Yeah. It was like a completely different type of grid walk. And the questions they were throwing at everyone was great. The way he went under the barrier to Bottas. Mate, I got, like you got to hand it to Lazenby. The guy's an absolute machine. Like, he just spots it. people around him and he just, bam, straight over, asks them the questions. I have like, no idea how you can reel off info like that. Yeah. But then I was saying, with, like, football, I reckon I could. Like, I reckon if I was walking through a uh, football stadium and I saw loads of people, I'd have enough backed mm. up knowledge to be able to throw a question at them. Do you know what? There's not enough of this kind of stuff in the music industry. Like, at music festivals, why aren't there people walking backstage? They do do it. Like, they do do it, but they should have people, like... Sky should have people. Do they not? They do, but it's always for just like random media outlets. What if they're filming like, their like movies? Don't like artists film movies? And that's like tour, where they Tour film. montage and stuff, yeah. But I would love to watch it on TV every week. If there was like every year for Glastonbury. I was, maybe they do do it. No, they do do it, don't they? Yeah, but they don't air every concert, do they? That, that's made me think. You could get away with that if you aired concerts. Like if the Ariana Grande concert was boxed. I, I'm not saying Ariana Grande just because that's there's who a, I'd buy a ticket to. There's a gap in the market here. Do you know what I mean? You could box office it, air it, make a show out of it, have it before. There needs to be more live music on TV. Yeah. Okay. Guys, watch this space. We've got another, we had another <laughs> business idea today as well, which we might start. But we can't tell you too much about that yet. Remember? What, what's the story that? one. Oh, mouth it to me. The story one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the story one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Won't go into too much about that just yet. Jake and I are going to become uh, kids TV presenters. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we need to make as much money as we can because we've decided we want to go to every race next year. We're now fit and healthy again. Vegas was incredible. Picture the tweenies, but it's me and Jake instead. There's already a tweenie called Jake. There is? Yeah. There's not one the called Fabio. One. No, but there could be. There's a Milo. That sounds a bit like Fabio. Purple's my favourite colour. I'm purple. Jake is purple, the purple tweenie. My old dog was called Merlin, which sounds similar I to Milo. I think that may be a tweenie's name. Okay, I could be wrong. It is tweenies. You're thinking of tweenies. Yeah, what are you thinking of? Teletubbies. Oh, I'm thinking of tweenies. Teletubbies. What was the song for Teletubbies? Come uh, on, this is pretty on the spot. Come on. It was my favourite show of all yeah, time. Yeah, come on. You've got to remember it. There's the green mound. Some people listening may around the world will probably have no idea I don't what actually remember the music is. me neither but I remember there was that funnel that come out the top they used to say uh oh and there used to be the little hoover <laughs> that went around 
Anyway. <laughs> That's slightly off topic. Guys, a lot of shit that happened straight off the bat at the start of this Brazilian Grand Prix. Oh, don't just jump into the best part of the show without oh, me giving you an introduction. Bloody hell, here he comes. This guy's just set up two cameras two in the living cameras. room today. Steven Spielberg had been calling him because every time he's on Final Cut, he was always getting out the colour wheels and just like making these absolute movies out of our videos. I just think we fell a bit behind with like, we stopped filming. Like we were filming every pod and admittedly we've been so busy, so backlogged with content. That, yeah. like, if we sat on all this footage, it would be a nightmare to edit. But... Oh guys, you wouldn't have wanted to have seen us recently. We've looked haggard. <laughs> we've looked really tired. <laughs> right, if you're watching this right now on YouTube, to paint the picture for those listening, we're currently sat on the one sofa if you've seen any of the videos on YouTube. Usually we sit like across the lounge, yeah. lying down like, guys, we're dying. That's how we do it when we're knackered. But today we're sat opposite each other, which is... You've actually um, set up the background quite nicely as well. Yeah. I don't know how that translates on the camera Given a green here. light for Mercedes, and I've put a George Russell sign behind us. He was down on the EA Drivers ratings last week. He will definitely He'll be, be coming up before the end of the season. That's, that's for sure. He's been incredible. I know this is his first ever win in F1, and it was his first ever pole in F1, I think. Could be wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty uh, sure it's his first ever pole. Yeah, it could be. But, but then he did have that amazing wet race a couple of years ago, but I don't think he got pole. You've got to give it to this guy. You, you've actually got to give it to him. This season, he has been so consistent. He has been unbelievable for his first year in Mercedes. And I think today, on them last 12 laps, whatever it was, after a safety car, uh. we'll obviously go for it all. But I think he really showed how good he is because he had Hamilton right behind him. They both had new tyres. And at that point, you've got to be quicker than a seven-time world champion in the same car well, that's to it, win mate. the race. The first time that Mercedes have won this year, and it's been George, not Lewis. That's a, that's a big statement right there. And there was a big gap before the safety car, but the safety car has brought them completely back together. And Russell has shown that he has the speed. Mm. It, it's amazing. What have, what have Mercedes done to their car this week? Right, okay. I don't want to blow my own trumpet, okay? Come but on. if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, I called way back at the beginning of the year that Mercedes will finish above Ferrari and the constructors. That looks like it's very close to happening now. I don't even haven't seen it, but Should I think it was check? like 40 last week, 40 points. And Fab's been telling me this whole time, no, Mercedes can't catch Ferrari. Well, they haven't yet, and there's one race left. And so. I also said a couple of pods ago that Mercedes will win a race for the end of the season, and you said no chance. So no, I did here not. We are. I did not say that. What did you say then? I said they definitely will, Jake. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Are you sure? Constructors Championships. How many points is it now? I bet it's barely anything. Wait, there's 19 points in it. Nothing. Uh, they, it was 19 this week. It was it was like 40 before this race. So, so if one Ferrari so, goes so out, it's all down to this last race, and there's there's not there's not much in it. So in the last race of the season, we got a constructors battle for second, and a drivers stand in this battle for second. They're both pretty close. Well, the drivers won. Mate, 19 is points is hard. You'd have to have Ferrari to not score any points. Well, they made up to like 20 this weekend. All. If they do another one two, it don't matter where Ferrari mm. finished, they'll do it. If Mercedes do another one two, it doesn't matter where Ferrari finish, they'll come second. No. Mercedes will come second. Yeah, because it happened this not weekend. Not if Ferrari come third and fourth and set a faster lap. They did this weekend, didn't they? Ferrari came third and fourth this weekend. The gap was originally over 40. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Mercedes will do it if they get a one-two. Do you want to put some money on it? Do you actually want to bet? What? You, what, you want to do a bet between me and you? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they'll overtake it. I bet 20 quid on it. All right. 20 quid. Let's have a gentleman's, gentleman's agreement. Gentleman's handshake. That Mercedes will finish ahead of Ferrari in the, in the constructors. Yeah, go on. Good luck, Fab. Good luck to you. You're going to need it because you're currently losing. Yeah, I've got terrible <laughs> odds there. It's very unlikely and I've just given you an even bet. But That's all right. We're we'll learning to get it back anyway. We just buy the same shit every day and share it all. <laughs> anyway, the intro for Fab's <laughs> notebook coming right up. <laughs> Fab's notebook. Sponsored by... Workplace for finance, HR and planning. <laughs> Isn't that right, Jake? <laughs> Yes, fam. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who watches Sky, that fucking advert that Lazenby and, and um, fuck, who is not Crofty, it's Brundle. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unreal. And we want to do it. <laughs> we want to do these adverts before every single race. I'd love to be the voice of every advert. I'd love it, wouldn't you? I would love it. I'd love it. But welcome to Fab's Notebook. Hello. <laughs> Down to Fab on the pit wall. Uh, okay, Jakey. I'm going to call you Jakey. Jakey. Because Crofty, Jakey, do you know what I mean? Cool, we got a bit of... Uh, Bromance going on on the sofa today. Oh, it's been, I think everyone knows it's been going on for a while. It's been kicking off quite Guys, a lot I Vegas, actually, um, Yeah, I nearly proposed in Vegas. Didn't, but got close. Yeah. He was sending me texts. Oh, no, it's, it's just stay away. Yeah, <laughs> okay, um, there is a lot that happened this race, Jake. Lap one, Ricardo crashed into K-Mag, and it was game over for oh, K-Mag. Such a no. shame. Lap one. What are your thoughts on this, right? Because I'm, it's fairly <sighs> obvious Ricardo made a bold move there, didn't he? That annoyed me. 
that annoyed me because K Mag would have been happy with the poll this weekend anyway. But K Mag did absolutely nothing wrong. Like K Mag mm. is just driving along and out of nowhere. Daniel Ricciardo, bang, straight into the back of him, ruins the race for both of them. <laughs> I thought fair play to K Mag because he walks over to him straight away. I'd have, I'd have bashed his head in. If he hadn't come this weekend, that wouldn't have happened. I would have beaten him to a pulp. But why on first lap? would you try and make a move like that when there's 70 laps left and you're right behind the car? It makes no sense. Like you're jeopardizing yourself and someone else. This is a guy that is trying to get a seat, a reserve seat. You know, the only open seat could be Haas, to mm -hmm. be honest. Um, or Williams, if Logan doesn't make it. But why, if, why would you do that? This could be his, one of his last few races. Yeah. That didn't know. make any sense to me. I feel like the me. guy just doesn't really care anymore, does he? He thinks, fuck it, I'm gone anyway. Let's just have a laugh. It was more a shame for Magnussen. What's the, um, what's the Senna saying? If you, don't, if you don't ever go for a gap that existed, then you weren't existing in the first place or something like that. <laughs> I'm sure that's so wrong. Yeah, but something like that. It's a good effort. But Ricardo, he wasn't even going for a gap, was he? There was nothing there. It's there a shame. There was no space. Nothing to say, really. It is just a shame. Yeah. I wasn't happy about it. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm not happy. I wasn't happy about a few things about the time penalties, the way they do it. I'll be completely honest. I haven't been happy at all with Lance Stroll this weekend. I didn't like the way in qualifying he pushed Vettel right out to the grass. Nope. That shows absolutely no sportsmanship. And I imagine myself being like a teammate of someone like that. That's your life in danger. That like you're going so quick side by side and your teammate out of everyone is pushing you off the track. That is absolutely crazy. And we've seen it with Fernando. <laughs> we've seen it with Fernando and Ocon as well. Ocon and, so we're going to have yeah, to get Alonso. into all of that. And the penalty for Max for Schnapples. I mean, come on. I mean, I know I'm usually a Red Bull fan. Today I'm Mercedes because they won. Yeah. But that was not a penalty for Max. You think, you think Lewis is in the wrong? Just take me through the notebook from the beginning, uh, Fab, before I get carried away. Well, I mean, that's pretty much the second thing on the notebook because it was the first lap. I believe down into the Senna S. Oh, yeah. They like call it. it the Senna S. Yeah. And they there have was... an amazing statue of Senna there, by the way. Now. Yeah, it's all like amazing. chrome, isn't it? And it's done by like someone from his family, like a cousin or something. Oh. Amazing, I like that. They've done that. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. There's also one in uh, Imola. A Senna one? Yeah. Yeah, there is, isn't there? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah on the hill. Because everyone was telling us to go see it, but we didn't have enough time. Yeah, because it was too far of a walk. Yeah, we yeah. need to go see that next time we go back. But yeah, Verstappen and Hamilton crash. Verstappen pit, changed the wing. I think, I'm fairly sure I heard him say on the TV that that was the fastest ever pit, including a nose cone change. Really? I think. What? That makes no sense. There's been loads of crashes on that one throughout Formula 1 history where people would have needed a new nose cone. Yeah, but the fastest. It was the fastest pit that included a nose cone that they've had. Oh, really? Yeah. What, so they did really well with it? Yeah. Wow. I think, I think that's what I heard. Cadams, Graham and Callum on the pit wall. Yeah. Quick hands, eh? Fast I'm, hands perk on I the new Call of Duty game. The, um, yeah, I love the new, new love Call, the new of, Call Duty of Duty game. game. If anyone yep. wants to jump into a lobby, quick game of domination. Yep. iBoys in 4K will well and truly come out. If Cod want to sponsor us and let us know. <laughs> May not know anything about Formula One, but put me in an S&D lobby and I will rip. ninja defuse you. <laughs> rip. You will, you, will rip, you will rip people up. Yeah, that crash. Talk me through what happened because they were coming up the home straight. They were having a, a perfectly good battle. They were having a perfectly good fight. You, they were giving each other space. Verstappen looked, and Lewis. Yeah, when it happened. Yeah. They were looking like it was fine. They gave each other space around the first bit. And then as they were coming into the second bit, Verstappen was clearly there. You've got to remember he has the inside line. He Lewis. may have been behind. You're going to say Lewis was yeah. ahead. Yeah. But that depends how you look at the track. He, <laughs> Verstappen had the inside line. That's what, the same as what Brundle was saying. If you're going to race round in that formation of next to each other yeah. and you cut it off, you know you're pushing someone off the track. Jake Buscombe. So, <laughs> With Jake, the rest shout out to Ruth Buscombe. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Ruth. Because Valerie Boss had a good race today. He fucking did. Yeah. yeah. And do you know what? I gave her some advice on Instagram just to dive into that really quickly. I gave. You, you gave the <laughs> Alpha <Alfred> Max. <laughs> yep. yep. What did you say? I said. This is fascinating. Oh my God, you're actually not lying. So I said. That's a lot of love hearts on the messages between you and the Alpha Omega mm, strategist, Fabio. Well, it's, we just both appreciate each other's messages True. because I'm giving some really good information here. <laughs> I said, maybe soft's right at the end. I said, two, two stops strat, maybe soft's right at the end. Uh, you're welcome. That was free of charge. What did she put? I don't charge for that. She said, facts. She said, pray for a dry race. So I prayed. Yeah, I, I did actually see you praying this morning. Last night. It was yeah. last night and, and this morning. And, this morning, yeah, and so. we had a dry race. So again, Ruth, Alfa Romeo, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> and then I just finally said, uh, lap 27. 
I just that's all I said. Imagine we look back and they actually pitted on lap 27. I, I said, have no idea where they. No, nah, I think they pitted a bit earlier. You were looking, weren't you? Watching I was the fucking watching it. I was watching it. If something happened lap 27, I'm a king. Yeah, we have to shout out Ruth Buscombe. She's the uh, strategist for Alfa Romeo. We met her out in Amsterdam. She's amazing, and hopefully we get to see her soon. She did a great job today. The yeah, whole team did. Amazing performance from Bottas. I think it was the moustache actually. Yes. yes, he looks pretty cool with that, doesn't he? Ah, I don't know if cool. Of course, no, the I right think word. he looks. He looks like a movie star, like, like Lazenby was saying. But, but Bottas is still one of them guys. You never know what you're getting. When I look at him, he's the only one I look at, and I'm like, wow, he doesn't feel like a celebrity. Like it's a weird one where like I don't have the attachment with Bottas. He's just a normal, normal dude, isn't he? Is it, maybe guy. it's because we've met him. Maybe because we've met him, I feel like that a bit as well. Because he was so relaxed. Yeah, I was bricking it when I met him, to be fair. Were you? Who have you been most nervous to interview out of everyone? Um, they were, the most nervous for me were with Ferrari, but that was for the setup. See, I was pretty, actually pretty calm with Ferrari. I think I was most nervous for, the, for, for Alfa Romeo, purely because I'd had no sleep. Yeah, that's tough, though. And I literally couldn't even figure out how to talk. Yeah. And that if anyone saw my eyes during that interview, they're so red. I don't even know how we got that over the line. That was the most incredible. We weren't taking most. drugs. We were just really tired. That's one of the other things you're going to see in the movie. We keep talking about it now, but we just finished our reel from Vegas. Go on Instagram at Pitstop or Instagram at Jake Boys. See that. But the movie is coming soon. All the behind the scenes footage from this year. And um, hopefully a lot more will make sense. You'll it's be able to be see huge. how we've done all this magic behind the scenes, eh? Yeah, you guys are going to be taken on a wild journey of two guys with no money. <laughs> <laughs> and I should say, some of the footage we're debating in-house whether it should be leaked, like the Amsterdam stuff. Like, should it go up? Might get us in trouble? We'll probably put it in, so you're yeah, going to yeah, enjoy we'll, it. Well, we'll chuck all of that in. Take me back to Max and Lewis then. What do you think? Um, I don't know. Hamilton was ahead. I think it was an unfortunate turn of events. They both came out. They both got decent, decent penalties. No, de sorry, decent positions at the end of the race. So fuck it. Just more of a Verstappen just wouldn't be very it. happy, really. I, I mean, Lewis Hamilton did an amazing race today, but Verstappen wasn't happy with that. No, of course he weren't. But then you know, Verstappen. Do you I think, know. Jen? This is what I said to you during it, didn't I? I was like, do you reckon they've kind of like just had to give that as a Verstappen penalty because over the last like six months, so much has gone Red Bull's way. I think loads has gone Red Bull's way. So maybe they were just like, I mean, Verstappen's won everything. I don't know. I mean, it, they, they obviously watch it back in slow-mo and they obviously watch it on repeat loads and loads of times before they call the answer. So yeah, there, I'm, I'm there seeing, must have been a reason. I'm I mean, seeing experts on Twitter. We've only watched TV, right? Experts on Twitter? Yeah. Don't fucking start with that. Matt WTF1, okay? <laughs> Matt WTF1 doesn't know shit, <laughs> okay? He is fed. All right, zoom in, zoom in right now, Matt. I'm talking to you. Okay, you were fed information from WTF One. You don't know shit about Formula One. Jake knows more than you, and that's saying something. <laughs> Mister Leclerc's gonna win every race. Exactly. No, they were all tweeting about it. They were saying like, "How on earth is that?" These people have actually. Watched. Yeah, it was a bit bold. It was a bit bold for them to 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 give that to Max. Yeah, but it's done now. It's over. Yeah. Ultimately, we got a George Russell win. I'm happy. Take me through. Straight after that crash, we had Leclerc and Norris come come together. With yeah. a bit of friction and a bit How, of something. No, and then Norris's car went at the end, didn't it? So but after that crash, both cars made it back, didn't they? They both went straight to the pits. Well, I'd have thought Leclerc would have been fucked there because he went straight into a wall. How did he come out that wall? I don't know. And to finish like in fourth, that's a whole other story. But yeah. Yeah, Leclerc had a great what, race. What a performance. You've you got to remember right at the beginning, he was right down at the bottom. I had no hope for Ferrari this weekend. None. None whatsoever. Didn't... You predicted signs on the podium and I fucking said no way. Yeah. Signs look good. Signs did look good today. Signs look great. It was so interesting watching the strategies. You don't usually get so many people using a different strategy in one race. Is this me being stupid? Yeah. Do they speak Spanish in Brazil? Portuguese. Okay, which is so, it's close. Yeah, it's, it is pretty close. It's close. Yeah, yeah Portuguese. So maybe, what, maybe, 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 uh, uh, maybe Signs has had a little bit of that that little today because of that. Do you know what I mean? A bit of rocket fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we did see a video of uh, Leclerc and Gasly turning up really late for qualifying. I think they might have been out on the lash. They're on the lash. Lando's Lando. got food poisoning. Slash was out for his yeah, birthday. Yeah, Lando's not fuck. sick. <laughs> <laughs> Lando's just hanging out of his ass. <laughs> he done well to get where he was. Five second time penalty for Max Verstappen. Yep, we've already been through that. Toto. Okay, right. where was he today? Toto, where was Toto Wolff today? Toto was not 
at the race today. He's at Butlins, isn't he? He's taking his kids to Butlins. I think it was Centre Parks, but um, Pontins, yeah, he, I he, reckon. He wasn't there. Actually, no, I don't reckon he'd go to Pontins. Centre Parks, probably, yeah. It's quite, yeah, because he's a bit more upmarket. Yeah. It's quite he's unlucky. He's got the suite with a hot tub and everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he's currently If he takes climbing. his kids to Disneyland, they're fucking there. I ain't they're ever going back works. to Centre Parks after there was that shit floating in the swim pool. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Centre Parks with all our mates. You don't want to go again? And, and our ex girlfriends, our girlfriends, ex girlfriends at the time. And there was genuinely a shit floating in the middle of the swim pool. I'm never going in this public swim pool again. That was that's the, fair. Imagine you come down the slide. Right, that's enough. But yeah, <laughs> you, you can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. You've got some serious writing in well, bold. Yeah, there. well, this one is in bold. This, okay, this is a valid point. Take yep. me, take this in. Right. I've only got like three things to add to the notebook today because I, I wrote down different kind of questions. Oh. This is my first one. It may be really stupid. Hear me out listening why not make the safety car a formula one car like genuinely now hear me out don't speak let me finish and also when there's a yellow flag stop the lap counter the reason this would work is because the cars would maintain a speed and it would mean the tires would stay warm and the gaps in the cars wouldn't like collapse as much but also then you wouldn't the tires wouldn't get cold the lap counter would stop there's two separate things there. Firstly, why isn't the safety car an F1 car? And secondly, why do the laps carry on when there's a yellow flag? They should pause it. Why? Because the race feels like it's over some, so quick sometimes. Like at the end there, I would have loved another six laps. Another five laps, because we lost like five laps on the, on the safety car. Yeah. That's a shame. And also, the drivers always complain that the safety car's going too slow. Why is a safety car not an F1 car? They didn't complain today though, did they? Well, I've heard and I think they before. always complain. I think it's just an ongoing thing because they are too. The safety car is much slower. But there's not frequently a time where when they restart, like they're all over the place because the tires aren't warm. Like I know the tires are cooling, but it's never that much of an issue. That but do you not think it the changes race. the race so much whenever there's a safety car because everyone can get an extra pit in, which I know is cool and part of the race. Maybe there's two two underlying issues there. Maybe the safety car could stay the same and they do go slower yeah. and their tires do get colder. But why do the laps continue? Like, we lose some of the race. Like, we, we do. Every, they just go round in a circle. Nothing can happen. I guess that's just one of the, the other penalties of a safety car. It's one of the reasons why people don't try and crash into each other. Like, as soon as you start taking away all these, like, things which make it bad, then people are probably more likely to fucking wipe someone out because it doesn't matter. I just know they should just stop the lap count. But then you can play, you can, you can play that into strategy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know they do because they play for safety cars. You, a lot of them will be like hoping there's a safety car trying to get a pit, especially teams further down and get an undercut or overcut. But why lose? I don't get it. We lose some of the race. I, I, if there's a three hour window for a race to be completed and they can see there's time, they just mm. shouldn't lose the laps. Yeah, yeah valid point. And also, why is the safety car not a Formula One car? But then we don't, also, we don't normally lose that many things. I think because of that, it's because the F1 car is a single seater. You can't have a safety car which only has one well, seat. Well, you say that, but there is the F1 cars with two seats. Yeah. Imagine that, me and you become the new safety car <laughs> in a two seater F1 That car. could be, yeah, that could be bloody awesome. I'd it's rather significantly not though. Significantly dangerous. I'd rather do this. Well, I'm glad. I've but not... maybe for one season, it'd be quite funny. <laughs> I'm glad I've added something to the notebook. I... <laughs> My notes are so bad. I'm that asked... is a valid point, though. I don't actually know why the why it's not an F1 car or something a bit quicker. A quicker car, and why do we lose laps? But it must be because don't they take them back sometimes? Like I know if they crash on the outside of the track, they can get a moped around the track. But maybe if they crash on the inside of the track, they have to get in the like, they get in the medical car. Well, whilst we're on this conversation, Ross Braun came on the thing earlier, legend, and he was speaking to Lazenby. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you call him a legend, but you, you come on the TV, you were like, who's that? Uh, you're, now you're just showing off in front of him. Ask me something about Ross Braun. Uh, Actually, no, let's scrap that. Ross Braun and Lazenby, <laughs> <laughs> Ross Braun and Lazenby were talking about like, how they're going to adjust to six sprints next season. Yeah. Because as you saw today, there's no FP3. Yeah. Which, would you agree a sprint is better than an FP3? Yeah. Yeah, I probably would as well. But it's going to change the whole dynamic of next season, of how everyone does everything. And that's where... Um, Ross Braun was talking about things they're going to change next year and add. They're thinking about what they can do to make it better. Is there anything you think, looking at a race weekend, that they could change or that would make it more exciting? Because the one thing I do bring is the safety car laps. I think it should stop. Do you know what? I think, yeah, this is the way that I view it. I think that they, it can constantly change. Mm. Like, this sport does not need to fall into, like, some stale like cycle of just being the same thing like i think 
part of what makes F1 so good compared to like, because football doesn't really change that much. Mm. I mean, what can you change about football? F1 will change their shit all the time. And like some years you'll think, well, that was a fucking stupid rule. They should get rid of that. And then next year they'll get rid of it and you'll have a good season and they might introduce something else. And then like, I think if it's constantly changing, constantly t challenging the drivers and the teams, and that's, I like that. It's a bit dangerous though to change it all the time. Because that's maybe where we've had the issues this year of like all the, the guidelines and the rules aren't set in stone. Like they're open to interpretation. The more you change it, the that's more always holes been like that, are going to be there. That's how the cars like back in like the 80s and, and whenever else, like 70s, 60s, like they always try, the car, the teams are trying to get away with adding stuff to the car. Yeah, and they do as much they're trying to find shit as they can. Loopholes, the scenes, obviously. Yeah, in the rules. Like I fucking rate that. I think that's so cool. It's, so, it's still, it still has a rawness to it. I don't like anything too clean cut. So are you willing to get behind my theory earlier from the beginning of the season that Mercedes have just been, had this amazing car all season and then they're just letting it loose now? Because I think that they've had such an amazing car this season that they've just built it and built it and built it and built it and now they're just showing everyone what we're going to get next year. And I think next year Mercedes are going to fucking smash everyone. I think they probably will. Don't you think? Well, that's, that is what teams do. They develop their car over the year. It looks like they've really so developed it. So it just means, it, yeah, and Mercedes are obviously top dollar at doing it. They're not, like, Hass aren't as good. But no. Hass, have, Hass have actually, no, Hass have slowed down since the start of the year. Mm. Saw the graphic on TV the other day. Interesting fact. I saw this tweet from, I think, Otmar, and it was saying how... Safna, whatever his name is. Otmar Safna. We've seen so much of Adam Siegel on TV this weekend, by the way. A lot of Adam Siegel. Shout out to Adam Siegel. Um, not a great job this weekend to DNFs, but it's not really Adam Siegel's fault, is it? <sighs> well, Electrical issues for Lando. Yeah. I'd say that that is first-hand Seagulls for fault. for Daniel Ricciardo. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, what I was saying is he was saying, because you know Red Bull got a 5% less wind tunnel time and like a fine. That's sure. all they got for the budget cap. Otmar was saying how like that, how the money in the championship at the points difference of where they finish is worth more to them than 5% wind time. So the teams under it don't think that's like fair mm. because the money for the positions in where you'd finish would be worth way more than win time. I, and I do get it because realistically, win tunnel must be important. But when the car's developed after this year and you've developed throughout the year, I don't reckon win tunnel's like, the, surely it can't be like the most important thing. Um, but how important is a wind tunnel? The cars can't change that much between now and the start of next season. They can change like uh, the bodywork and stuff. So how much are they actually? <laughs> this reminds me of episode one. So they almost get like That's a, a good fucking. <laughs> it does a little bit. No, it is a good question. Like how often? How much do they do they use the wind tunnel during the season? They can't. I don't think they get allocated time before the season. I'm pretty sure. I don't think anyone's allowed to use it during the season. Isn't it completely shut? I don't know because they do change the, like the aerodynamics of the car mid, mid season. I think. Well, there's no like significant change next year, is it? It's not like we're going to a new regulation, new tires. <laughs> How have we come this far in a year? And we, it's it's so funny that like pit stop has progressed so much in some areas, yeah. <laughs> but us and our knowledge hasn't actually really <laughs> gone they, very far at all. Yeah, you say that, but then there'll be stuff and stories and things about Formula One that we know that no one in the world knows. And that's because the way we've hit this sport has been we have learned from the inside out. Like we've been so lucky with the guests we've had that the stories we've learned have been first hand. Like a maggot eating its way. Literally, because we could have someone in. amazing, a guest, telling us a story that the rest of the world know. But then they'll tell us something off camera that no one knows. And we don't even know that no one knows it. Yeah, so I, we I, are I, full of I, information. Our knowledge is, is very fucking weird. It, it has like patches in it. Yeah, it's worth tuning in for. Every now and oh, again, yeah. you might get a little bit of gold dust. Oh yeah, we've seen some secret shit, guys, that you can even fucking imagine. Uh, Basically, I know why Red Bull is so quick this year. So <laughs> you've maybe, told them multiple maybe, times, and I think they say you've listened. And maybe you guys will juice. find out one day. No, it's not the orange juice. That was a bluff. Don't tell them about the real thing. You can't do that. Uh, Take us back to the notebook. Yeah, George uh, basically radioing in to Mercedes and saying, "Do I switch? Do we switch with Lewis?" Mm -hmm. And they said, mate, this was, this was after the safety car that we had from Lando going off the track. It was a virtual safety car, then went to a full safety car. George is asking, do I swap with Lewis? And they said, George, you fucking go out and you fucking race. That's tough. Now, we c when you look back at it now, George did amazing because he was right racing Hamilton. Fair play to George. But that is tough for George. Why? Because he's done like 65 laps battling his arse off to get to first place. There's a safety car and out of nowhere his teammate is now right behind him who is a seven-time world champion and George wants his first ever win. Yeah. He, but he's radioing into the team going, are we going to secure a 1-2? But 
thinking I've been at the front the whole race. They're going to let me win my first race. Mm. And he's hoping they'll say one, two. He's not hoping they yeah. say race. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, they've said race, which I loved. That is such a good move from Mercedes because there's teams on the grid where if you said that, that would fall to shit. Like, that would not happen with <clears throat> Alpine. <laughs> yeah, even Red Bull. Look what happened today. We'll get into that in a bit. But not giving that position back is crazy. Yeah. yeah, fair play to Russell. He took that. He didn't argue. He didn't say, I've been here all race. He said, all right, fuck it. I've got Lewis Hamilton behind me. He put the his balls on the table and just and said, Lewis just went isn't going to yeah. catch me. And yeah. and that that for me is is statement and an amazing move by Mercedes. And that's why I'm wearing the Patronus Formula One team outdated. Is match. it Patronus or is it Petronus? Well, there's different ways to pronounce it. It depends where George you're from. George says Petronus. Yeah. Toto says Patronus. Hear me out, pit stop podcast fans. Right. Fabio Bocca speaks to Gunther in Vegas. Haas get pole position in the sprint. Fabio Bocca speaks to George Russell in Vegas. George Russell gets sprawl, pos- sprawl position, pole guys, position in the qualifying. Guys, it's clear to see. Fabio Bocca speaks to George Russell, sh- Russell, shakes his hand in Vegas. George Russell wins the race. Okay? All I'm saying is... Guys, look, it's look, fucking... It's their black and white front. The me. magic is right in front All of right. you. All Hire right. him to be the strategist. We also met Gunther and then Magnussen went out on the first lap. So... <laughs> It's a bit hit and miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> what advice did you give to Russell when you met him? I said, Russell, um, you want to just stay out front for as much as possible. Don't let Lewis pass and you're going to win the race. And he mm. said, do you really believe that that will happen? And I said, I promise you it happened. He said, I fucking, I fucking rate you so hard. He said, he <laughs> says, you are an absolute fucking legend fab. yeah you did really hit it off <laughs> he said fab you come into every birthday party of mine you can have christmas around mine he just really went all out there was, oh they were all so kind they were all so kind alec alban said i could go on. alec alex alban said i can go on his private jet whenever he wants <laughs> it was yeah they're all oh, lovely no. people they're all lovely lovely people <coughs> you chat so much shit do you think Next season, looking at it from now, if you had to make an opinion before the next race, just off what you've seen, if the Mercedes is really quick next year, which it probably will be, who do you think is who do you think it would do better? You've just seen a Russell Hamilton race for like the first time, basically. We've just seen a Hamilton Russell race for the first time. Mm. So next year, if they've got a great car, mm. who does better in the championship, Hamilton or Russell? Lewis. Do you not think it's even more of a statement from Russell that he did this in Brazil? Do you think that I think that Lewis's uh, reaction time is just drop like a couple milliseconds? Really? Mm. Just, just compared to George, who's so fresh. George is so fresh. George is like a frog, like tr- like trying to catch a fly with his tongue. What, we've had just quick. some conversations with races before. Oscar in particular, he said Oscar Piastri. Yeah, he's, I remember him speaking about the it. The F1 driver that was on our sofa. Yeah, well, I don't whose lag. name is on our fastest lap. I don't want to show off, but yeah. Okay, yeah. He was saying how sometimes who turned up in a mini and couldn't park it. Yeah, that Oscar. That's, that's the one. Got it. He turned up in a McLaren. If, if that's better for branding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was saying how sometimes he likes not being at the front. He sometimes he quite likes being have someone to chase. Yeah, like, and I get that. I feel like I would be better as well in a race chasing someone. I think out front, I'd be way more likely to put it in a bin. Really? Do you think there's more pressure to be first or to be second? Like, there's a lot of pressure to catch, but then is there more pressure knowing someone's fucking Holding right it off. up your ass? Mate, like, when you, if you're for fucking driving that Mercedes they were today, you wouldn't be that scared because it's so quick. Unless there's another Mercedes behind you, then you'd be very fucking scared. If I was George, I'd have been shitting myself today. Mm. you got a seven-time world champion behind you in a fast car. Yeah. You could see how much you meant to him after it. I'd have peed my little pants. Yeah, I'm sure he did. I'm sure Lando was sick of her as well. Lando didn't look great. But Mercedes did show broken. how well organised their team is. Should we talk about Alpine's team orders a little bit? Esteban I mean, that, was, <laughs> that was something, wasn't it? Yeah, Esteban ordered not to fight Fernando on the restart. Esteban was arguing. Yeah. Ocon didn't want to let Alonso through, um, even though Alonso had the tyre advantage, which was interesting. Mm. And this was right at the beginning. I don't know if anyone else noticed. I noticed on the first lap. You even saw them shutting each other out. And Alonso is very clearly done, isn't he? Just checking on the frame here because I feel like I'm just slowly... Checking what, where you look in the camera. Yeah. You look lovely for YouTube. Thanks. Do I? Nearly got 40,000 subs. If got- you're listening and you haven't subbed to the YouTube, you know where to go. YouTube. You do. YouTube.com. Uh, type in pit stop. Mm. Alonso's done, isn't he? Huh? Alonso's done. 
like dumb. You can tell in his interviews, he's like, one more race to go. <laughs> I thought he said he was like, his career's done. No way, I mate. thought, are you bloody joking me? Fernando Alonso's got another century in him. Fernando Alonso has, has easily got another five years in him. <laughs> I, I, I wish. I, I wish more than yeah, no, Yeah, no, he is done. He's done with, with Ocon. He's done with Alpine. He needs a fresh start. And I think Ocon's done with him. They look like they don't want to be teammates. So how do you think that Pierre and Ocon are going to get on next year then? That's a difficult one when they've had arguments before. I mean, it's all well and good. I love the Instagram they put up when it was like the picture of them as kids and pictures now. And I think it's a great lineup, two French drivers. I reckon that's all just a front. That's all for social media. I reckon they fucking hate each I other. I agree. I completely agree. At the end of the day, what, they want to beat the other person. The team can give whatever orders they want. Even if me and you were in a team together, you may <laughs> be my best mate, but I swear to fucking God, I'm not caring about them, the radio. Do you know I what? Battle you. It's actually nice to see Pierre Gasly at a, 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 a team which has got potential to be really good because Alpine are actually better than I thought and well, AlphaTauri are actually worse than I thought. So <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually excited now to see him go to Alpine. I think it'll be, it'll be good. Someone sent in a message on the uh, pit stop page in our DMs yep. and I've remembered it. I can't remember your name. Sorry, but you made a good point. You said, how on earth are Red Bull, how on earth is Alpha Tauri's Red Bull side team? How on earth are Red Bull won the constructors in first and Alpha Tauri are like bottom when they pretty much, it's basically the same car. It's basically the same team. I know it doesn't have the same upgrades and the same team working on it, but like it's, it's their baby. It's their partner team. What like, do they share? <laughs> maybe they've just not done any development on the Alpha. Well, what do they share though? Oh my God, have I just unraveled everything? Imagine they've took all of Alpha Tauri's wind tunnel time and like tested everything on the Alpha Tauri for the Red Bull just so that the Red Bull is so good and that's why the Alpha Tauri is so bad. That is now that is controversial. That, you're gonna that. you're gonna have the FIA. Someone knock, is knock, gonna knock be knocking at the door tomorrow, door aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, it won't just be the debt collectors. But no, yeah, seriously, how are Alpha Tauri so much worse? Well that's what I'm saying. What do these teams share? Are they, are engine? They, is it just an engine? Engine. Bank accounts, I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm sure they're linked, aren't they? They're all owned. Yeah, but if you I mean, Red Bull and AlphaTauri are very close. Shows how much, like, you know, brakes, aero department, everything, all like that shit is very important. There's only one F1 mech. Do you know what? There is only one F1 mech. Um, you, F1 mech. And what, one Cadamsgram. Exactly. <laughs> so you can't have them in the so same you, bits. Exactly. They can't work for both teams. What I'm getting at is that I can't remember what I was about to say. So, um, but Red Bull were a great team. <laughs> you complete that completely. Uh, Tari, Where are you back? at with your notes? You've got loads of notes. Uh, we're near the end. We're near the end here. We're near the end. So what happened at the end? Because then we're getting into, you're saying about Red Bull being a great team. Well, well, what the fuck happened at the end of that race then? Yeah, well, before we dive into that, I just want to go back to the fact that Leclerc came fourth today, yeah, guys. Yeah, amazing race. After he fucking started in, what, ninth or something stupid, wherever he started, he, he had a crash. Back. back of the grid, he was actually behind Verstappen. Mm. And he somehow worked his way through, managed to make it all the way up to fourth. Um, absolutely unbelievable. That was after the restart. Carlos Sainz and Perez, some great wheel-to-wheel -wheel action again. That's what you love to Carlos see. Carlos Sainz's wheel was on fire. I still, yeah. I still don't understand that. It goes into a pit. They rip the tire off. They rip another tire back on. He goes off and he's driving off with a wheel on t on fire. How yeah. does it put itself out? Because it cools down. It's the but brakes. How they don't like? It's the brakes. And it was from a tear off, wasn't it? It was the brakes. Which yeah. we talk about a lot, tear offs. We do. We do. It's all of us like as if we knew nothing about tear offs. Mm. And then one day, as soon as Brad came on the pod. And pretty much told him about, told us about him, and then we started noticing them on the TV all the time, when they were ripping them off. Brundle was saying that they used to have somewhere in the car to put them, and he was saying, "Why don't they do that anymore?" A little pocket. Yeah, I think they did, and now they just go. Psh, throw I, reckon them off. It, I reckon it's so tight in there. You seen it when they drive, like they're literally like that because it's like. Russell is a prime example for it. You want to see what a Formula One driver needs to look like? Look at Russell. He literally has. Slender man. It is, it is very much. You have to be, though. I reckon mm. George is quite comfortable in that car. I think he looks like the perfect fit. <laughs> like he's been molded in a factory <laughs> to fit this. He's a lab baby. He, yeah. was, he was born in the F1 factory. Imagine that's actually... We could be unraveling all sorts of shit. There, <laughs> Area 51. Area F1. Nice. nice. <laughs> that was off the top of the dome as well. I didn't even think about that. I do want to go back to Alonso again because this guy oh, here we go. just continues. Does he continue to, to amaze you? I'm wearing my Alpine blue because of him. Your Alpine blue? Is he, this your granddad shirt? No, it's not. I bought this ASOS. Uh, not ASOS. I bought it in uh, 
somewhere on Oxford Street because it was it's a nice it shirt was, mate. it was a tenner Alpine blue it was like 80% off something crazy um, nice material what is it satin sort of like towel towel yeah, yeah. Nice, you can put so it straight can, on after a shower. After a shower. Yeah, this is literally just what just I did. Just that yeah. straight on. Yeah, that's why I can see any wet patches under my armpits. That's all, it's just water. <laughs> Alonso steaming around the outside of Bottas on a corner. I never see anyone do overtakes like this guy. This guy. The only other guy I see like do it is like Max Verstappen, but really... Or Vettel, if he goes crazy. Nah. He did, he did go crazy a couple of races ago. Come on, don't take it away from Vettel. Fernando fucking Alonso, right? Vettel's got one race left, agree. Fernando agree. Alonso. Okay. But you are going to be sad to see Vettel leave. One race left. Oh, yeah. My favourite colour is green. I like the smell of fresh fruit and roses. Same as <laughs> Where are you same, buying your fucking same roses if they're green? Same as him. <laughs> <laughs> Perez. Um, Verstappen was basically ordered to let Perez through. This is where the main controversy, well, I think, of earlier. the race starts. It goes back earlier. Because Verstappen <laughs> was behind Perez. And then they said to Verstappen, we're going to let you through to go and get points Attack off Leclerc. Leclerc and Sainz. Yeah. And, and Alonso. And they, ra they radioed to Perez and said, don't worry, because Max will let, let you, back you back through. through at the end of the race if he doesn't make any gaps. Verstappen gained a second, was a second behind, didn't catch anyone. And then on the last lap, they're radioing the whole way round. And then it gets uh, to the final Max. straight. <laughs> yeah, go on. Max. <laughs> Hello. You yeah. need to let him through, please. He was just like, no, I have my reasons. Stop asking me. He goes straight over the line. Yeah, he says, I have my reasons. You know what they are. I made it clear. What are the reasons? There's feels a bit of something there I don't like. There's something that happened at Monaco. Okay, what happened at Monaco? Don't know. There was something about a crash, wasn't there? Have you shaved the middle bit of your moustache? No, I haven't shaved the middle bit of my moustache. Because it looks like you shaved don't the middle bit. Don't make me self-conscious when there's two cameras on. Two bits here and there. Does it look nice? Do I look well trimmed? You should do it. I've done it before. Well, shave the middle bit of you my hair. You shave this bit no, and you just keep these two bits. I'm refusing to shave now because I keep doing the dodgy lines. You should do, um, you should get rid of like the, this middle bit and just have the mutton chops. Mutton chops coming for the next episode, I'd guys. love that. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, what do you think? I, it's unfair. I think Max has been a little spoiled bitch. No, I'm joking. I don't, I no, don't think you, that. No, uh, you... Look, what you're look, saying is valid. Look. Yes, I have got shoes on for today's episode. It makes me feel alive. Like... Put your shoes on inside, Mate, it makes me feel, makes like, you feel like a racing driver. Makes me, yeah. It's motor racing. It's motor racing. Max doesn't have to let him through. He doesn't. Don't start a debate with he, me. It is not against the rules to let Perez through. Yeah, but you're, that's so unfair. This is Max. This is Max saying to Red Bull, listen, motherfucker, I am the fucking boss around here. I am the king. Don't fuck with me. That's what he's saying. And Red Bull are like, oh, okay. I agree that that's the kind of standpoint he wants. He wants to be known as a number one. He does whatever he wants. If he's leading, he wins. It's Max Verstappen. But that is bullshit. Because Red Bull as a team have collectively given these two drivers a car that's good enough to be one, two in the constructors' standings. As a team. Max wasn't going to win that race. Max doesn't need any points. Max had nothing to gain from that race. Nothing on his record. He couldn't go to podium. That is just pure... I don't give a fuck about my teammate. Well, it does go on your record a little bit. What, finishing sixth for the seventh? It's no difference. Like, if he could have won it and it could have gone on to his record of how many races in a season, maybe. Point, or even a point, podium. Points in career? Yeah, maybe points a season. You're telling me Max Verstappen wants to get one extra point after winning that. I think Surely Max to your teammate. Checo has done so much for Max. Think about everything Checo has done for well, what Max. Did Checo, last what, what did Checo do for Max in, in, in Monaco? We need to find out. So we don't know. Checo did max over a little bit at Monaco. I'm pretty sure it was a crash that, that didn't go down very well or something. Right. I, I can't remember. Either way, I think that's a, a, against it. A crash is unlucky, unfortunate. I don't see it as a deliberate. Well, either way, because of this ludicrous decision that Max decided to make, Perez and Leclerc, as we know, are now obviously level on points, which in a way, does make Abu Dhabi quite exciting now. Mm. Because Red Bull won the championship, Max won the championship a couple of races ago. What else is there really to look forward to apart from this kind of midfield battle? Well, this is, this is one of those things. Who do you think takes it? And why does the Red Bull look slow at the moment? It's not just that they had a bad race and some damage and things went wrong. The Mercedes looks like it's on bloody rocket fuel. Something's happened to that Mercedes. It flew past Perez. Perez sudden. I know he was on medium tyres. Um, mm. You know, there were some weird strategies out there today. They may have worked in a different race. <laughs> I really don't know. It's funny. I just find it funny how a car can develop that much in like that this late in the season. It's pretty wild. 
And they must be kicking themselves thinking, fuck me, I wish we could have done this like six months ago, you know? How much of it do you reckon comes down to like someone loving a certain track? Like genuinely. I was kind of thinking about when they were driving around because we look at it differently because we've never driven around these tracks and we haven't played on the sim much. We don't really think about it, but it's all muscle memory in it. Like when, when we make jokes and we're like, oh, we wouldn't know where to break. We'd crash everywhere. They mm. haven't got a driving line. But to them, it is pure muscle memory. After every lap, you know exactly where to take that corner and where's better. I think Lewis has been doing Brazil for a long time, and he? So that's how good Russell did today. Like nothing can mm. be taken away from GR77. Fuck. GR63. There you go. GR is 63 in it? Something like that. If it's not... Is this a Mercedes? Is this a Russell? 77 was Bottas, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, 77's Bottas. 63 is Russell. Yep. Because he couldn't give it to us for the roulette. Yeah. So he gave us his birthday, yeah. the 15th. Yeah. Check us out. Yeah, the Brazilian Grand Prix is over. Wow, Russell, what a race. Russell gave us a number. That's quite cool. <laughs> yeah, now you got your voice back. Did you have a good time in Vegas? I fucking loved it, guys. I loved it. Um, good birthday? Do I? You what? Do I just go on record right now and say it's probably the best birthday of my life? Wow. I mate, you are a fucking part of that. So give me some of this. Yeah. Give me some of this. Yeah. <laughs> give me some of this. Because we had oh. a fucking, we had an unbelievable trip. And it was my fucking, the best birthday of my life. And the best trip of my life. We met some of the most amazing people that I've met in my life. And we were there for the Formula One. It couldn't have been any better. It's been a real privilege the last couple of months. Coming up to the end of the year, it's a bit of a strange one. That's such a good fucking word. It has been an absolute privilege it has. to have been a part of this season it has because we didn't know anyone and and this is what the movie will show like we've genuinely done all of this from the flat and we noticed it earlier even on ted's notebook and you know we're not taking credit for this because it may they may have done it anyway but we had michael italiano on as a guest daniel ricardo's coach and they oh, never usually yeah. speak to them on like notebook or on anything and ted went up to michael and was talking to him and i know there's all the drama around ricardo so that's why but like, it just feels like we've given a bit of a spotlight to people that don't usually, like they never ever would have spoke yeah, to a performance coach. And then they nah. go up to Michael and you're like, that's so cool. Cause Michael's such a cool guy. He was sat with gnomes. Yeah. But still like, yeah, the fact that like, he didn't even have to say like, this is Daniel Ricardo's performance coach. He just said, oh, hello, Michael. Mm. Like as if Ted expected that everyone knew who he was anyway, which I suppose most of you do. Like that's just cool as shit to know that we may have had some sort of hand in that in some sort of roundabout way. Yeah, it's been an uh, amazing year. I think when you guys see behind the scenes, it, it might open a lot of eyes. Um, obviously, we've been very lucky and done a lot of trips, but it hasn't come without a lot of hard work um, and a lot of begging people for money. Hard work. <laughs> a lot of begging people for money, I tell you. To be honest with you, the only hard bit has been the paying of the rent, which we always talk about, but oh, that, is only, that has been the only hard part about When it. I say hard work, I don't mean in any aspect that I've ever actually done anything and thought this is hard. Like, no. I, I have never even felt like we're at work. I've just, loved just, every day. It's just that stress, isn't but it? But it's in just the back being of the stress of like, yeah. we've had multiple opportunities this year we haven't been able to afford, which obviously loads of people can't afford to go to races, but obviously, because we want to do this for a job, we want to get to as many as we can. So, yeah, guys, we we you know we could have gone to Mexico this year and we purely couldn't go because we couldn't afford it. I, mean, I think we've definitely obviously spoken about this, but like, yeah, there's been so many cool, exciting things that we have done, and there's been a lot of cool things that we haven't been able to do. But hopefully, with the way that pit stop is going, and if you fucking amazing people keep supporting us out there, then we're going to be able to do so much next year. And it's just as exciting for you guys as I think it is for us because you get to watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's looking like an exciting season next year. We're gonna yeah. obviously have a new season launch at the beginning of the year. Um, after the races, you may be new branding, new photos, new haircuts. And give them the, and, and what's the one thing that we're going to change? It's going to be great. We're uh, both going to get loads of sunbeds, so we're really tanned in the pictures. <laughs> Imagine we come back with news, we look completely different, like filler in our faces, <laughs> like we look like we've spent loads of money on ourselves. Yeah. I'll come back looking like Simon Gale. I'm going to come back looking like um, the one from High School Musical. <laughs> like what, Zac Efron? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'll come back looking like the bird. Ooh. Yeah. Well, Hannah Montana. No, the other one. What's her name? Tiffany. She's um, nice. Tiffany. Uh, Ashley Tidstow. I actually know her name. Oh, Ashley Tidstow. That's someone in school with it, Huh? Selena Gomez. Yeah. Is she even in high school? I don't know who I, any of these people are. I don't know who any of these people are, even which age shit. Guys, it's, it's going to be a good year, isn't it? It's going to be unreal, and we can't wait for you guys to just carry on tuning in and watching it. We should say, though, when the final race is done, Abu Dhabi, don't expect us to go anywhere. We should be hitting it harder. We have just booked a massive guest for in 12 days' time. As soon as he is back from Abu Dhabi, we're going to his house. It's going to be a great one, isn't it? 
Oh shit! Yeah, don't, don't say anything. <laughs> you forgot about that, didn't you? That's going to yeah, be a great one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be. Don't say anything awesome. else. It's going to be awesome, guys. Thank you very much for listening to the Pit Stop Podcast. The Brazilian Grand Prix was amazing. George Russell has his first ever win in Formula One. It's fully deserved. Rate the podcast five stars if you've enjoyed it. We upload every Monday and Thursday. As you guys know, we're new Formula One fans, learning as we go. Thank you for joining us on this journey. The next episode will be on Thursday as we look ahead to the final race of the season for the battle of second place. Abu Dhabi. Give us a quick outro. Let's say something. Ding, ding. Da, da. Oh, it's Landon Norris's birthday today as well. Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. Bit of energy. Happy uh, birthday to you. Bit of energy. Happy birthday, dear Landon. Oh, JPG. Happy birthday to you. Do you see Daniel Ricardo's? Did you see? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Daniel Ricciardo started a dot JPG account? Yeah, it's and already you already know it's not going to be as good. No, Lando smashed it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to Pit Stop Podcast. We'll be back on Thursday. Rate it rate it five stars. Hit the follow button. I say that so quick, it's like an advert. Hello, 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 hello. Ladies, it's like Terms and conditions on the radio. Terms and conditions. Please buy this. All right, this is enough podcasting. Out. Fifty-one seconds. Have you enjoyed it, guys? That's where you say yes. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>